uh, black holes actually made a long journey from uh, an idea to a full theory and finally to a uh, physical observable phenomena. If you look at black holes, I mean, one thing we can do, I can take a little marble and throw it up. And of course, it will fall back to Earth. And you can wondering how fast do I have to throw the marble so that I can throw it to the moon? It has to escape the gravity of Earth and it has to have a speed of 25,000 miles per hour. But now you can ask, you know, can we make the Earth heavier or what we can also do, shrink the Earth, make the mass more concentrated and thereby strengthen the gravitational force? So how small should we make the Earth so that even light cannot escape? And the amazing thing is that the Earth will be as small as another marble. But then a marble that would weight as much as the whole Earth. Now, this is a very caricature of a black hole. But the better way to describe it, of course, is Einstein's equations. Einstein's equations that tell us that space and time are curvature generated by energy and mass. So it's like the stage on where I'm standing is not rigid and flat, but actually is made out of rubber sheet that curves under the influence of mass. And if you have enough mass, then actually the whole thing will turn into itself. It will essentially, the space time will curve in such a way that it stops objects from escaping. In fact, what we form is what technically is called an event horizon, a sphere surrounding the singularity, the place where everything gets crushed together, a sphere that surrounds that singularity that divides space-time in two regions. The outside, where everything is safe and things can escape, and the inside, where things are doomed. And they're doomed in a fundamental way because inside the black hole, there's only a limited amount of time. Black holes are, of course, absolutely fundamental in understanding uh, our, our universe. And therefore, it's important to see where we can find them in the universe. And I want to mention three examples. The first are black holes which are roughly the size of a star. If you have stars which are heavier than the sun, at least three times heavier, or typically ten times, at the end of their life, they will explode and the remainder will collapse and will form a black hole. If you are kind of lucky and the black hole is part of a binary system, there will be another star orbiting the black hole that can feed off its energy and mass and all the, the matter. It will swirl around the black hole and will emit X-ray radiation. There are now many, many examples of sources in our galaxy of these star-like black holes. But there's a second category, which is even more fascinating, which are black holes that are sitting right in the center of galaxies. And it looks like almost every galaxy had such a black hole. And the plumes of radiation that are coming off are so large that, as you can see in this picture, they're even larger than the galaxy itself. Hundreds and thousands of light years of energy that radiating out of these galaxies. And if you move inside the galaxies, and we can do this by watching with our telescopes, you will see that inside the galaxies there is these huge black holes that are millions or sometimes billions times more heavy than a typical star. And just to give an impression of how forceful these objects are, even these galactic centers, these supermassive black holes, which are a million times heavier than the sun, they're not that big. They're perhaps four times bigger than our sun. So much energy in space is concentrated. And we also will discuss a third type of black hole, which is even more mysterious. Because as I said, a black hole is not necessarily large or small. It can have every size. But what about if you took a black hole and made it as small as a particle? Could a proton or electron be a microscopic black hole? Well, to ask that question, we actually have to marry the theory of general relativity with quantum theory. And this is where one of the most important achievements of Professor Hawking was made. Because he realized that if you take tiny black holes, you really take into account the quantum theory of matter, the things, the laws that govern the smallest particles, then actually black holes are not black. They start to radiate. There's a possibility to, of matter escaping the black hole, and thereby the black hole can evaporate and in some sense it looks just like a particle that's formed 
and again decays. But if we take that last step and really ask these kind of questions, we are really no longer in the realm of observations of good answers. We are really at the stage where we should ask good questions. <laughs>